This is the first forestry style job I've taken on. Not all plans were perfectly executed, and this video is to document the lessons we learned. Coming out now, we've got a nice escape route down that way. It's leaning in the way that we want it to be felled. Can't see anything that it can hang up in. Um, I've got uh, some wedges there ready just in case it decides that it wants to play silly buggers. We've got ropes, uh, we've got the petrol winch to help us as well. Um, so we are pretty well set up. Clear your escape route debris and walk it before you cut. It's no good to trip over if you need to get out of the way from falling debris or a barber's chair. The first tree to fall is the one with the clearest path to the ground. This opens up space for the next fell. So much of safety is preparation. Experience turns hindsight into foresight and the winch, wedges and ropes knowing how to set up pulling advantages are all valuable techniques. But new situations are dangerous and require extra thought. With ivy, strip the trunk to the bark first so you can see your cut and holding wood. When the tree actually hit the deck, I was probably standing about here. The tip hit that tree and that tree bent. You can the butt end back this way. And if you see how far back it's come, back from the stump, if it come the other side, this is where I was standing, it would have been very, very close to me. It's all about these little lessons, because it might stop me from being spattered. So this is where there was the most tension and it pulled all of these fibres through. And on the front side they've been crushed. And there's not so much fibre being pulled up here, because the tree was leaning this way, so this side of the hinge was actually always under some compression. Every couple of trees would have a tidy up, so we'd sned, and cut and move the logs. Knowing tension and compression is important to avoid getting the saw stuck and predicting how the log will move. This is doubly important with two people working on the same tree. We have a 600 kilo petrol winch to help us drag and stack logs. It's not the easiest to operate and it's not super fast or powerful but there's no sensible way to move these logs by hand. Better equals faster equals bigger, stronger machine, equals expensive. We had the winch and it did a great job, but we had to do some lifting. This one's got kind of a, a lean pretty much dead that way, which is where we don't want it to go. Hopefully I'll be able to get it over with wedges alone. If it doesn't, my backup plan will whack it with a spruce tree. <laughs> The 201 rear handle is a great saw, especially with a quarter pitch chain. Low kickback, fast cutting, and it's not too powerful for people with less experience. It's also light, so the ground crew will actually use it by the chipper over a top handle. This cluster of two spruces and one beech proved a challenge, and in hindsight it may have been better if I felled them all in one. All three were back leaners and were more tied together than I expected. I made the following mistakes. I misjudged how tied together and back heavy the spruces were, and I didn't set the line high enough in the spruce to maximise my leverage. What I did right was I had two backup plans. If wedges fail, use the defender and pull the trees over. It must be properly tangled up in there, mustn't it? If the pull fails, put cuts in both spruces, and if they're super tangled, they will both fall. 
If the defender spins, add the winch. Place switches in the back cuts to prevent the trees sitting back or going backwards. Unfortunately, footage of the first Bruce corrupted just as it fell. Yeah, it's caught in it. Wait, it's going slowly. Really slowly. Really slowly. Oh, yeah. That took a lot of work. So we've got the beech tree back clean, branches interfering with the other beech behind it. So I've got a rope on it, side to the defender, and the rope has already been loaded up so it doesn't go with the wedging. So I'll hop back in the truck, drive forward, splat. That's the plan. <laughs> At the far end of the wood, the trees were all side leaners towards the client's house with no option to pull backwards and with a public right of way behind the direction of fell. We've already got some tension on it and because of its side lean, all this area is danger zone, especially on this side because it's the, even though we're trying to counter it with that, with uh, we're going to aim the directional cut a little bit up the hill so it just skims this tree here. The blue line as well, that's supposed to counteract some of the side lean quite good because it's going almost opposite in the, in the direction the tree wants to go so that will help the hinge out look in this leaning larch next to it there's also a hanger up there a hanger further up and another branch up there that I don't know if it's severed or not but it's pointing vertically down and as that brushes it it could knock those three and probably and aiming it directly down the line of that blue rope and using the bend in the tree to get the top so it doesn't smash straight into that one we know from one of the first trees we did, if it crashes into a tree in front of it, the button can jump backwards. So we've got the bendy tree, and that's going, it's bent at 90 degrees in a very unhelpful direction. So I've got a two to one pulling advantage rigged up in the truck to this stump. Down there we've got the um, we've got a redirect. And beyond the redirect we've got the the wonky tree. So we're basically going to try and get it to fall exactly in line with the rope. Two hundred and seventy of three hundred and sixty degrees was no go. Seventy degrees was woodland, leaving us with twenty degree drop zone. We ended up felling two additional trees to make ourselves more space as side leaners are tricky and they can stand up and snap in the direction of their lean. I climbed to set the pulling lines higher than the ladder could reach and used to redirect fully to get the right angle and use the defender as muscle. Today's our last day of this kind of phase of the operation. So we've already cleared quite a bit. Lawrence has chipped a load of brush that was kind of getting in our way and so we've got more freedom to move the truck around. We've mounted uh, a pulley high, so hopefully as we drag the logs up, we'll get some lift on them as well so we can drag them up and over, up and over each other. The best laid plans are sometimes only 50% effective. The winch in this case didn't have quite the power we needed and the rope we used was too wide a diameter so we couldn't get enough wraps on the bollard to produce the friction but it worked well enough. Stacking the logs came down to good old fashioned muscle power on a day that neither Lawrence or me were feeling our best. Fuel. Are you joking? Oh. Well, that's it. That's it for now. And we've shifted a lot of wood. Yeah, what was I saying? About four or five tons. 
I think we've moved. Maybe more. Maybe five or six. Because these last few ones, some of these were at least 200 kilos. 